Okay, so how do you feel about the uh, the the situation or the standing of the QCP situation? Because I remember going on the news, on No Jumper News at a certain point and saying it's going to be a big decision to see if somebody like Gucci Mane is trying to stand next to P after this. I don't, I don't, I don't think it, it didn't have any effect on how those no, dudes treat No, I don't him. think anyone gives a fuck. Yeah. He's already up there. He's very fucking rich. Everybody thought that I was going to get assassinated right after that video <laughs> came out. Um, I don't think Gucci... Ca- like, that's the thing, bro, is when people get to a certain level, no one really cares. Yeah. All that street shit goes away. Mm. The street shit only matters when you're down bad and broke and fucked up. Once you get money, nobody really cares. It's the same thing with, like, killing. Mm. Motherfuckers will kill you for nothing because they have nothing. When you got something to lose, now you don't want to do it. Mm. Now it's like, what's the point? Same thing with robbing. If you got money, why rob? You're not addicted to robbing. You were robbing when you were broke. Mm -hmm. Gucci's up a ton of money. QCP's up a ton of money. Who gives a fuck? Right. You know what I mean? Like, anything could come out. Something could come out on Gucci. That's not going to affect him. So it's like... I wonder if behind the scenes, when they're having conversations about P getting exposed or whatever, I wonder if they're just laughing at that. Bro, the whole Atlanta knew about that shit for years. Mm. The guy that died, I talked to one of his family members. He was like, everyone knows about this shit. Everyone's just scared to talk about it. Mm. Because we don't have the money. That's all it comes down to. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you got the bag, you control the situation. Who even exposed it before you? Or were you the first one to bring it to the... Nah, fuck no. I didn't do it first. Who who talked about it first? Properly. I don't know. Mm. I think I just seen it online. Yeah. Uh, Maybe academics... Did he talk? Might have gone like over talked it. about it first. I think he went over it, whatever, because it was a piece of paper that was shown, right? And then I went and found it because mm-hmm. it exists. It's in the Fulton County. Anybody can look it up. Yeah, it just feels like if P's not going to get rejected socially for it, then it makes no sense that Gunna is going to get rejected. Although Gunna told on a famous rapper, which is different than yeah, P people, telling on people somebody. People are going to be biased on the situation because of who's involved. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck about who P told on, and the guy's dead. Yeah, versus. Gunner told on Thug. Yeah. And Thug ultimately is more beloved than Gunna. Yeah, of course. Which means that Gunna's going to be the one who takes the, the heat gonna for it. going to feel some type of way, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if Gunna's, like, invited to Rolling Loud and shit at this point. I wonder if it's safe for him to even go. Yeah. or But I wonder if, like, Rolling Loud would even feel like it was worth the risk to have him booked. I'm not sure if he's, like, booked for this weekend in Miami or anything. I don't know. I know a couple of people are, though. Finesse is there. <laughs> Rito's there. I don't think Boston Rich is there. But I think he has been on some of them. I was surprised because Bootleg Kev owns a club in Arizona, and he told me that Boston Rich, he performed there, and it was sold out. People loved it. I was like, oh, I guess that shit ain't nothing. He made good music. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's it's If anything, it makes you kind of want to reexamine the 6 9 thing because even though he told in like the most extreme fashion – it is kind of weird now, like somebody like me just listening to Gunna and not really thinking about the snitch and shit that much. Bro, the whole six nine thing wouldn't even have been that bad if six nine was black. Mm. Six nine was Mexican, so people were already like, "Oh, you ain't even in the culture for real. You're not right. that. You're not this." They already hated him. A lot of people could see through the tough guy act. They're like, "You're really pussy." And then when everything proved to be that, everyone's like, "See, I was right." Yeah, that's all it was. They just hated him. There was already such a reason to hate him. It's like Jake Paul losing the fight. Yeah. Everyone was watching the fight because they were hoping he would lose. Right. But he was winning. You know what I mean? Then once you actually take a L, everyone's like, ha ha, see, I was right. The real crazy thing with 6 9 though, was how so many people, including somebody like me, who did not really get along with him throughout most of the time he was free, I liked the music. There was a bunch of songs that I loved. And then he has not made a song that really connected with the culture since then. And you can blame that on playlisting or whatever, but I don't know. It's like when that shit happened to him, his whole, like, the public's ability to take him seriously as a musician just seems like it went away. Although that apparently does not extend to the Latin community. No, they do shit different over there. But, um, you know, one thing that I always questioned, too, was with 6 9 he was dissing the dead like crazy. Mm. So it's hard for me to imagine how anybody supports that shit. Right. Like, he's showing up and doing, man, he went to Old Block. And, right. you know, he was just doing a lot of shit, trying to antagonize Dirk, like, that's why when the Kings beat the shit out of them, nobody has sympathy. Yeah. We forget that that was not that long ago, and that was, like, one of the biggest news stories of the year. I mean, I got some breaking news on that situation. What? Case is done. 
those guys, fa- uh, the charges were dropped? The armed robbery was dropped, and the father got probation for beating the fuck out of 6ix9ine. Really? And he wants to do an interview. Really? Yeah. With you or with who? With me. You want it? I mean, shit. I don't know. What am, what am I going to say to them? Fly him out. He, he, gonna, he beat the fuck out of 6ix9ine. That's a yeah, good conversation. Yeah. I would like to talk to him. Yeah, why not? Yeah, them boys really... Damn, why did he get off so easy when there's so much because evidence? Because the robbery was bullshit. It wasn't about the Would robbery. Would they take the was, phone or something? Yeah, like the phone, Crocs, whatever. It was bullshit. And then apparently what actually happened is he walked outside with the sneakers but then threw them back. Oh. They just didn't show it. So, you know, the robbery got dropped. Probation for the ass whooping. You're good. I keep seeing shit that makes me, like, way less scared of committing a violent crime like Blueface shooting that guy outside the strip club in vegas and then getting probation for it i'm like so you're telling me that if it comes down to it i could just shoot somebody i'm gonna be able to walk away from it if i get a good lawyer that's wild yeah i feel like i would have never went to prison if i had money oh yeah 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 right i feel like i would have beat my whole case yeah probably but that was like the best learning experience for me so yeah happened for a reason who knows how if you had got deeper and deeper into whatever the fuck you were doing <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, shit would have been fucked up. You could have got to the point where you got a case that you wouldn't have been able to walk well, away Well, if from. I never moved back up to Boston, because I got out in July of 2015. July of 2016, I got arrested for chasing somebody with a gun. Mm. If I had did that in Florida, I would have had a mandatory life sentence. So it's crazy to think about how things could have played out. Mm. I should appreciate how it did. You got to wonder about Spot him, Got him too. What about him? Well, he just like, it seemed like his career just froze Man, and just that ended. Midget bitch, but fuck it, we just <laughs> got into it uh, on Instagram. Oh really? Yeah. Well, the thing is, um, it, it was like a blood holiday the other day for mm. the East Coast. So the day before that, I uh, put all like the fake blood rappers that got exposed for snitching mm-hmm. on my Instagram story, and I seen that he was throwing bees up and shit. I'm like, how? How? What blood? Like, who are you with? Right. All your pictures are by yourself. What bloods are you with to make you even feel comfortable talking about, uh? And then uh, he put something on his story, and I sent him his statement in his DM. And um, me and King AK47 jumped on live because I'm blocked from going on live. I basically just went through his paperwork again. You're flat out told. Right. I was like, there's no. But yeah, his uh, that's kind of what fucked up the situation with me and Say Cheese. Oh, really? I think we're good, though, because I jumped on Say Cheese live the other day, and he said he wants to do an interview. Really? So we should be good. So Say Cheese wasn't fucking with you for a period of time because that was his artist and you exposed That's him. That's what I assumed, yeah. But I don't, I, I've heard Sean Cotton have the conversation in other interviews about Spot Him, Got Him, where he seems to be fully acknowledging and accepting that he, he ratted. Yeah, I heard Sean don't give a fuck. Yeah. Sean's getting his bread. I mean, he signed a lot of artists. He can't be just giving a fuck about all of them in the long run. Yeah, I don't know. Right I mean, that was just my assumption. And um, I would comment on a lot of Say Cheese posts and my comment. I just couldn't find it. I felt like they were deleting my shit. Oh, really? Yeah. And then, like, I felt like when they would post something with me, it's like, oh, alleged paperwork drops on Boston Richie. It doesn't mention me. Mm. It's not alleged if you can fucking find it for yourself. So I felt like certain things were, like, biased towards me. But from what I've heard, we've yet to have a conversation. From what I've heard, it ain't none of that, though. Interesting. Shout out to him. Yeah, Sean Conn said he was going to interview me at one point, and I never heard back about it. So I wonder. I always wondered if he was. Well, let's see who gets it first. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe he just hates white people. Hey. Understandable. <laughs> Maybe. We got I a, don't lot, know. a lot of smut on our race's name, Jake. Well, I don't think he's interviewed too many <laughs> white people, right? You milk. know, you know they he say always I'm from milk. New Hampshire now. Really? Yeah, milk doesn't count though. <laughs> Most, most You're black. a secret black guy. You see yeah. that video on Jubilee? Yeah, I saw that. That's, <laughs> I didn't that's how I actually it, but... found out Milk's name and then found out he has a sealed case. Oh, he does? Yeah, but it could just be a juvenile case that they sealed because it's, you know, God. whatever, whatever. If but, you yeah. exposed him as a snitch, you'd be doing us all such a favor. That'd be crazy. Right? That'd be great. You know what? <laughs> Mad people from L.A. said that to me. Really? Because I got a guy out here that does a lot of the court shit out here. Right. And he's who I had going looking at him. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I could see 